So let's go ahead and we're going to turn our the visibility of our wings and engines and everything off. So all we have on screen is the fuselage. There's a couple ways we could do that. Um, we could uh, turn things off here, or we could just select our primary object and go to viewport solo. And then everything disappears and we just have really one button to push to turn everything back on. It's a little more efficient than double clicking this to turn it, that visibility on and off. Um, like if I turn this back on and was to, right, I can turn that off with a couple mouse clicks there. There's just a couple different ways to do it. Um, this is nice because it's, it's simple and soloed and everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out where do we need to add some more detail. So the first thing I would like to do is here you can see those are my engines um, and there's some sort of tapering that happens here that in, in all three of my views is really hard to see. Here I can kind of see it a little bit better. You can see that this actually tucks, stays tucked in a bit more and then it sweeps out to the wings. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and attempt to fix some of that first and then we will go from there. So I'm going to go into my top view. I have my cube selected. I'm going to go to points mode. I'm going to use my live selection tool and I am going to select all of these points, making sure, right, visible only is unchecked. Let's go ahead and select this tool and double check. Yep. Okay. Now I can, um, at this point I could, there's two ways I could do this. I intentionally did not select the middle point. I can drag these in like this and this might work pretty well. Um, I could try again using um, the scale tool in one dimension, but you're gonna see what it does is it scales it towards the center of my selection, which is kind of cool, but not exactly <laughs> what I wanna have happen. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move this in until those outside edges are where they want to be. I'm gonna hit space bar. I am going to click off to, uh, into nothing. I'm going to select these points, pull these out a little bit until they kind of match the edge of the cockpit. I'm going to leave that all there for now. I have a feeling the bottom side is going to be a little bit off and I don't actually right, have an image of the bottom of this spacecraft. So we're sort of guessing there, but we can also look, um, look around. I'm going to go ahead and select these points pull these in as well, right? And get that a little bit closer. And you can see that, right, I'm starting, these are pretty close to where I want them to be, but I actually really want them to be a little bit further out. This whole edge, according to this view, I could nudge forward. So why don't I select all of these points and just move this forward just a hair. Then I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these points. Um, I have a feeling that this is about where I want it to be and that the sides taper up, but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select all of these except that center point. And I'm going to move them all in. I'm gonna come down again and kind of do the same thing here. In this case, it doesn't need to go as far. Um, and then I'm gonna to go to the back of the X-Wing. And this is where things get a little interesting, right? Because these all need to be independently manipulated. So I want these outside ones, right, to pull in. I want these inside ones to go a little bit less in. Although actually what I may want to do is un I'm gonna actually select these points first pull these in until they are aligned with the top of that. Definitely pull this in here and grab the center point and move that in as well. And I might actually undo the that movement and go ahead and make sure I have all three of these points selected and pull this in. And then these last two points, I think I need to pull in until they're aligned there. Right, now this point, 
I'm I honestly kind of worried about. I don't think that's correct. I can tell looking at it that it is not. So I'm going to go ahead and move these a little bit more. And you can see I definitely need at least one more edge in here so I can flesh that out. And that's also true, right, as we go forward, you can kind of see this is where that the wings attach. Um, and so I'll probably need some additional geometry in there eventually. But let's go ahead and take a look and see and make sure that we haven't wrecked our model yet. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate my view a little bit. And you can see, again, it's looking much more like an X-Wing now. It's every time we do this, it gets a little bit better. Um, one thing I definitely need to deal with is that, right, these two points here, um, which are the edge of my cockpit, um, either need to be lower or higher because the cockpit's a little bit tricky and we'll talk about this in a bit. And you can see at this point, because I've been attaching everything to um, these other two views, things look a little weird in here. And that's where this additional geometry needs to come in. And I may have just scaled everything down too much, or I may just need to scale this drawing. Honestly, if I scaled this down just a couple percentage points, that might work. So let's go ahead and see about scaling this down. We're gonna go ahead and go to view, go down to configure. And this is something maybe I should have adjusted um, in the past, but you can see it's, um, if I, it has keep aspect ratio on there. So I should be able to manipulate one direction and it should scale, you know, somewhat centered. Um, so let's see, we just need like a touch smaller image. So I'm going to step this down. And I'm just going to keep stepping it down a few more pixels at a time until, and yeah, I'm just clicking away here because I'm trying to be precise. I could scroll it to um, just click and drag. Okay, so that's a better size. You'll note that I could actually um, go ahead and make my offset Y probably negative two or negative three or negative four maybe. There we go. So this seems like it's fitting a lot better now, what I may want to do eventually is I'm going to, like, I'll have to reposition the wings just a touch, um, but I'm not super worried about that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say that's good enough for now. All right, so let's go ahead and see what else we can do. One thing to note, right, the nose is a little bit off right now, so I'm going to go ahead and um, take some of these points and see if I can just move, oops, move these down a bit. Oh, I should probably select all of them. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, what's interesting too is in this view, right, the nose cone is not exactly where it is in the other ones. I'm remembering that from this tutorial previously. So again, we don't really, I may just leave that as it stands now, right? These points, though, perhaps I could actually sweep back a little bit. And if I really was thinking everything's too far off down below, I could right pull these up to be this tip and sweep these back a little bit as well to make the tip of this nose cone. Why don't we go ahead and do that? All right, so now this should be a little bit the front of the ship should look a little bit more accurate. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Um, and it may be, you know, tipped up too much. We may need to dip that down, but that's something we'll look at before we add too much detail um, to our model. Okay, so we need at least one more set of polygons running along here. Right, because we need to be able to push that out. If we look at our front view and zoom out, right, we can see that there's just, at least in the back, there's like a, you know, some bulk. 
that comes. And so we will need polygons that go all the way through to do that. And then um, we are probably, and then we're going to start really getting into the into the details. So let's do this one last cut, and then we will take a break and continue on in the next tutorial. So I can see that width really, if I kind of align up here somewhere, I can probably maybe from this point back. Um, I can probably get it pretty close to where I want it to be. Let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to use the line cut tool. So I hit K and then K again to get the line cut tool. Or I can select the knife icon over here. I'm going to start from this point. I want to make sure that visible only is turned off. So I'm just going to click on this point and I'm going to come over. I'm going to hold down shift so that this starts out nice and straight. And I'm going to go ahead and be off here in space, click again, and then just hit escape. All right, so now I've got more geometry. And if I go back to my front view or any of the other views, you can see, right, I've got these, these points here. Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure where these need to be moved up this edge. But there's, some, there's another tool I want to show you that's going to make this. Because right, what I'd really like is for these to be able to sweep up the edge and kind of come to this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select every point. I'm actually pretty happy with where those are. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to select all of these points. And we're going to see what happens. I honestly haven't done it with this many points selected on this many edges. We're just going to see. This is a new thing for me. But the very bottom tool here is Slide. What Slide does is it allows me to move these points along this these lines. So I'm not going to be adjusting the position of the geometry. I am just going to be moving these points. So I'm going to try and slide these points I've selected along this edge. Now, what I was hoping would happen is that I would be able to manipulate all of these points, but the slide tool is not allowing me to select some of these things. It might be that it's covered up, um, but it's not a letting, letting me do all the points as a uniform thing, right? I can do these individual points, but I'm not allowed to do the entire group. So I have to make a decision. Do I want to um, have these points, you know, manipulate? Do I want to manipulate these points independently? and just go ahead and start to, you know, bring these up and figure out like where on earth does this geometry change? Um, or do I want to try and do something as a group? I want to show you how to do this as a group um, because we haven't really talked about edges mode and how we could um, move all of these at once a little bit. So if I go to edges mode, and I'm going to go ahead and not select anything because I already jumped ahead and did this. All right, so I'm in edges mode and I can select edges. Now, one of the selection tools we haven't talked about, and we really haven't talked about any selection tools, is loop selection. So there's this, the icon right here below the brush selection is our loop selection tool. And this works kind of like loop cut in that it will select a loop of edges, a loop of polygons, a loop of points. Um, it depends on what mode you're in. In this case, it's going to select this loop of edges. Now that I've got this loop of edges selected, I've got a slightly different um, <laughs> slide uh, setting. There's actually, there's equal spacing down here and there's slide. And so we can look at what each one of these does differently. So I'm gonna take slide and I'm going to click and drag. And you can see that this does indeed slide the geometry along here, but things get really ugly um, <laughs> pretty quickly. And that's not exactly what I would like to have happen, right? I don't want this whole thing to be warped as much as it's being warped. Um, so I'm gonna try this equal spacing. And what equal spacing does is it's going to adjust the width a little bit differently based on the surrounding geometry. 
So you can see that it's pulled the nose cone back some, and I might take that edge and pull it back forward when I'm done, or I could deselect it now um, and just manipulate these other points. But you can see that this does a little bit more of what I want. Um, it's a bit more controlled. And so I think I'm gonna be happy with just pulling this up until that edge is kind of at near the bottom of the cockpit. If I look over on the sides, that gets it, right? If I get, crank it more, I'm gonna get it a little bit closer to those points on the edge, but I think I can do the rest of that manipulation myself. So I've got that selected. Now, one of the things that's gonna start being tricky here is that, right, I want to leave all of this part alone, but I want to expand things back where the kind of the engine compartment is. So it's probably these two edges. So let's go ahead and um, go to our live selection tool. And we have, right, we have visible only turned off. So just like with points mode and everything else, we've got this ability to do these selections. Now, something to note is, right, sometimes it's hard um, unless I zoom way in to select everything I need. So I'm just holding down shift and selecting those edges. But manipulating these edges, and actually I don't, I'm gonna not select this other one, but I have these edges selected. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to transfer this selection to my um, uh, to points mode because I want to just have those points selected and not have to deal with trying to select any other points so I can pull them out here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to points mode but when I hover over points, you'll see it says hold control to transfer active selective selection. So I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna click and then what it's going to do is it's only going to select the points that are associated with the edges that I had selected. This is really, really a super handy tool and it makes me so happy. <laughs> okay, so now that I've selected that, I'm going to move these um, and I've, it looks like I've got the whole thing selected. So really what I wanna do is maybe make sure I just have the one side selected since I'm working with symmetry. So I can see the three points that I need it to be. So I'm gonna select this one, this one, and this one just one more time. That should give me an axis here that I can manipulate and still move those other ones. So I'm gonna just pull this up and out until it's here. And now I've filled that out. The wing should fit a bit better there. The bottom side doesn't really have any of that additional manipulation, which is great. We don't need any more points down there, just these ones up high. And if I rotate my view a bit, you can see that again, I'm starting to get some of that differentiation between from the fuselage to the, um, to the, the back part of the body, um, which is great. Um, and now we just need a little bit more control maybe in these areas to see where we can start to um, separate out that um, that uh, what's it called um, the cockpit so let's go ahead and look at the front of our model and you can see I've got this point here fantastic I've got these edges here um, and if I go and look at one of the models, in one of the things you can see, right, there isn't any, this is just a hexagon, right? There is not any other deviation on the surface. And so this is a place where if I was to grab these points and try and move them up or down or left or right or whatever, um, like if I could just move this up, because let's say, right, I wanna be able to get, to use this to really um, get that uh, cockpit you know, carved out a little bit. But if I just move this point up, it's going to do, um, it's going to change the shape of the nose cone, right? It's made it wider up here. Whereas really what I want to do, if I undo both of these moves, is I just want to slide this point up, right? So this is a perfect use of the slide tool. I should be able to grab this and just slide this up the side of this, right? So I've got slide selected. 
But what I want to do is I want to be able to reference the side view when I'm doing it. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to slide this up a little bit higher here. Right? And so what's nice about this is it shouldn't have made any difference um, on my nose cone, but it has allowed me to slide this point further up. Now, I may want to slide this one up a bit, um, and I don't even need to select it to do that. I can just pull this up here. And the same goes with this, just because I know from experience, the more uniform these shapes are and the smoother this is, the happier... <laughs> the happier the modeling goes later on down the line. Okay, so we've got these things set. If I come forward, you can kind of see that that is accurate, right? All of these points are a little bit forward of the nose cone tip, but they are aligned here. I'm not gonna worry about any more scaling issues there, but this is where things will need to taper in and some changes will need to be done. Um, but we're in a pretty good, happy place for that now. So let's look at our, um, look at the cockpit. You can see that that's starting to look a little bit more like the cockpit in the next wing. Um, and you'll see that these points here, right? The cockpit doesn't come to a peak. It actually is flat. So what I want to do is I wanna to go to my side view and I wanna grab these two points, but I'm gonna hit space to get my brush selection tool, make sure only select visible is off, which it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and move these up until they're basically aligned with that other point. All right, so now I've got this flat. You can really start to see how the shape of this is, is coming together. And we are getting much, much closer to the type of geometry that we want. So let's go ahead and save our work again.